uh, trying to pivot back to uh, why we assembled here today. Uh, this is a great day. Uh, it's a wonderful day uh, that we can celebrate our most beloved person in our life. Uh, if anybody who made uh, an impression in our mind uh, that will last not just a few days, few months or years that we ended up spending with this man, uh, we call our true friend. He called us our his true friend and he promised us this, that his friendship is going to last forever, not just this few moments that we spend on this planet Earth, uh, but much, much beyond that uh, space that we hold right now. And I hope uh, you all are able to hear me. Uh, okay, seems like uh, I'm not hearing anything back, so it's going well. Uh, so this event, uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, give shout out to some people who, uh, you know, have who have uh, put together this event. Uh, although you just see my face, uh, believe me, there are a lot more people behind and working. Uh, uh, tirelessly to make this happen and I would like to thank them uh, and sorry uh, I hope you're still able to hear me I just want to make sure that everything is okay uh, alright uh, so uh, you know I wanted to give uh, a little shout out to people who are uh, behind uh, uh, Isha, uh, all the volunteers that uh, have contributed in arranging this event, not only this event, but you if you saw a presentation yesterday uh, from Paul Bauer, uh, he, uh, myself and a bunch of more people serve in this committee to ensure that uh, master's dream of building a meeting hall in his master's name, Huzur Maharaj Baba Sound Singh Ji, that actually is fulfilled and uh, maybe uh, I'll share a little bit of the story that he told me uh, and uh, uh, why he wanted my seva uh, for this work and I'm sure other people have also been asked in the similar manner and uh, I wanted to share some of my personal stories with all of you and so let me share a bit of that uh, I had no idea that I would be uh, participating in this seva for my master uh, at least I had not envisioned that I had no desire to but uh, you know it uh, doesn't matter how much we like or not you know if he wants something done he will get it done uh, so yesterday Paul shared this letter from uh, Ishwaji and uh, sometime in 2016 maybe 2017 I happened to see that letter, although I had seen it uh, several times, but uh, kind of glossed over it. And uh, this was uh, morning, early morning. I got up because I could not sleep well the whole night and got up in the morning. I started looking at ishanews.org and bumped into a huge paragraph of Ishoji talking about his dream of having a data at, uh, at Bruce. Uh, which will be similar to the Dera in Bias and how he is going to uh, dedicate this building, this place to his master. And uh, I, so by then it had been a couple of years since I had known Ishwaji and had been hearing his lectures. And, uh, you know, as I uh, was sharing yesterday that uh, I was like a rock uh, and I would always wonder why these people are crying in front of Ishwaji and uh, what is happening to them emotionally how come i don't feel it and ishwaji would sometimes give explanation of why this is happening to some people and uh, because people would uh, upon looking at him would instantly burst into cry uh, and uh, some of them would shake and un uncontrollably and as if they don't have con uh, you know uh, any control over their mind body and uh, so it, it puzzled me and uh, while reading this letter from Ishwaji, you know, everything sort of came as a, a highlight to me uh, that how this person from India has come over here with few dollars in his hand and committed his complete life to him. And uh, uh, not only he, he has been giving lectures 
for free and traveling uh, wherever uh, there were seekers and uh, he spent his own money uh, to to quite some degree uh, without caring uh, about uh, how he's going to get all that money uh, when when he has spent all the money that he had because he knew at the end that great master uh, it is great master's work that he's doing and he did not worry at the end and uh, i remember uh, sometimes he quoted that he would let people uh, when it came to handing over responsibility to others he would just gladly do it and tell them that okay you can put the rifle on my shoulder and and fire you don't need to worry so he had that kind of absolute faith in his master and so upon reading this letter you know i overcame with uh, a lot of emotional feeling that uh, somehow you know it is my desire as well to somehow get involved in my small ways and i think uh, some spark happened at that point that i decided that okay in some little ways i'll try to do my seva like everybody you know since he is asking uh, then uh, you know if we can uh, share a little bit of what we have in fulfilling his dream uh, you know uh, we should all do that so with that intent uh, you know of course that uh, i became very emotional at that point and uh, i was never like that you know so uh, i felt that okay something similar to what uh, all other disciples would experience upon seeing him uh, is somehow happening to me as well because i used to question you know why why do you uh, what is this uh, love and devotion you talk about you know i understand other concepts that you talk about uh, you know the the different levels of creation you know how we separated from the totality of consciousness so mentally one can grasp these concepts but uh, experience of love that uh, only very few chosen one probably get it so i was seeking for that and uh, so maybe through this uh, letter i got a glimpse of that i i felt uh, how much dedication he had uh, for his master and if he is willing to commit all his life to that maybe we can do a little bit on our side so with that uh, thought i thought that uh, in future i'll get uh, involved and time took uh, somehow its own course and as i uh, 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 you know over time got closer to him uh, some of the stories i'll share later as i got closer to him uh, one day uh, this was in chicago uh, office uh, where he used to have three companies office in schomburg uh, uh, one day upon uh, leaving the office he just met us met few of us in the hallway and uh, he looked at me and a couple of more people and he directly came closer to me and said jagannath uh, i want you to uh, uh, become chairman for uh, a building committee i want you to look at what's going on uh, i want you to make sure that we are making progress and uh, can you please uh, put together a re- report for me and uh, when master asks you you never say no uh, although i had a lot of doubt in myself that uh, this is a this is something i've never done Uh, i've never been a chairman of anything you know uh, i've been a small boss in my company but that was the extent of it so i had uh, no idea how i would go about doing it but if master is asking you in front of so many people you know i just uh, nodded uh, accepted silently and uh, that's how i he decided to get me involved uh, from that time uh, in terms of doing a little seva for making his uh, dream come true and uh, so although you see my face but there are so many people involved uh, i uh, i wish i could uh, enumerate all the names but uh, that also is dangerous because i may uh, inadvertently leave some people behind and so rather than doing that i would like to at this point uh, you know uh, say that uh, your valuable contribution is so much meaningful to me uh, and i'm sure to ishwar ji as well uh, because we all are doing uh, his work in our own way and helping uh, his message be carried through uh, generations of people and want to make sure that whatever dream he had uh, is uh, fulfilled to the uh, to the best possible way that we can so um, 
uh, in terms of organization organizing this event as well a lot of work had gone in and as you saw uh, i was trying to troubleshoot uh, the issues that happened uh, with the technology and i had to call upon few people and so they were able to help me so thank you uh, to all uh, who have been able to participate and and uh, for those also who have not been able to participate because of whatever reason is going on the fact that you are thinking about ishwaji uh, and and seva to him that is a great offering on this blessed day when uh, the the grace uh, from heaven from uh, creator himself uh, you know is available to us in the best possible way because we are dedicating this day uh, to him remembering him all his messages and uh, we just need to have our attention on him on his messages for me uh, i want to think about uh, that the time that i have spent i want to share some of the incidents with all of you so that you can uh, get a small window into this personality who was amongst us and how we have lost him in physical form but he is yet available for those who are deep seekers who are seeking him in his heart he has not gone away uh, in fact uh, i i am myself doubtful sometime you know whether he is around or not uh, because uh, you know i i don't have the gift of some of the people who are able to see him uh, i know he is there he uh, when i have doubt you know he comforts me uh, he gives me assurances through coincidences uh, like uh, some of the sevadas were uh, recounting yesterday of their personal experience of how uh they got a sign from ishwar ji of course we are mentally interpreting some of these signs uh, that these are sent by our master but when you are thinking of him and when you through coincidence see exactly what you need to see and you are the only one who can understand what it means you are assured that it is coming through him so recently uh those of you who uh, joined the zoom yesterday might have seen during the lunch break there was a picture of shiki's uh, restaurant and it's so strange to me because as i was uh, planning to come to chicago uh, i had to uh, uh, for various reasons you know i had to travel to other place um, and on my way uh, uh, you know we decided to uh, take a break journey and decided to uh, stay at this hotel and we were taking the exit and we saw uh, there's a restaurant shiki's restaurant and i thought it was in chicago and this place that we were going through uh, was los angeles and uh, so i was very surprised that uh, in los angeles there is shaky's restaurant and clearly it it's just impossible that uh, we have been at uh, los angeles so many times and we didn't even know uh, that there is a shaky's restaurant and so clearly it must be signed from ishuji himself that uh, and and right before uh, that the whole day i was asking him for some sign uh, uh, because uh, bhandara was coming and i was uh, mentally getting prepared to celebrate this big event with all of you so uh, here was a, here was a sign from him directly and we were so happy we went to immediately we went to this restaurant had uh, had our share of pizza and uh, the whole night was uh, you know uh, wonderful enjoying his pizza and and remembering him uh, about how he uh, used to marvel about uh, you know shake its pizza i'm sure all of you have heard those stories uh, so uh, i wanted to share some of my personal stories uh, and let me uh, i think we have lost a bit of time but i'll try to share in the remaining time some of the events so i've jotted down few notes that i thought might be important for all of you to hear to to understand uh, what kind of loving man he was uh, how he dedicated his life to his master and uh, that's a that's a unique example in our life that we can try to uh, be a good disciple just like he was for his master and dedicate our uh, you know pretty much everything as uh, king janak had to do uh, for getting a small glimpse by surrendering his mind body and wealth uh, so uh, uh, i i would try to share some of these things with you uh, so that you can see that not only uh, by citing raja janak's example 
uh, not only he gave an example uh, of third party, but he himself exemplified through his day-to-day uh, -day living and sharing some of the stories with uh, other disciples like me and others. So just a couple of uh, months back, he passed away. Uh, he, uh, you know, he had a Zoom meeting with me and he was just narrating some of the stories. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he asked me, have you watched this video of uh, Dr. Clarence, Clarence Brinson and Johnny uh, throwing a huge birthday party for him? Uh, I think it was uh, maybe uh, downtown Chicago uh, Hilton Hotel. And uh, I told him, no, I haven't. And after, I think, uh, a month or so, uh, that video was played during his monthly uh, satsang. And uh, so somebody uh, uh, shared that video with me, uh, or, or I got a chance to see it later. Uh, but he told me uh, that uh, he, he, he gave me the background of uh, how the companies were set up when he came over here, how Dr. Clarence Brinson and Johnny uh, got him a, a job at his company, um, Vegetarian Health Society, and he was eternally grateful for that opportunity because uh, that led him to come to the United States and was able to carry on uh, some of the work uh, that uh, his master wanted him to do uh, to meet the seekers and, and uh, give them, um, uh, 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 show them the path of how to do correct meditation and how to find the, the true essence uh, and how to get self-realization uh, without depending on outside. And so he was truly grateful for that. And uh, he recounted some stories as to what happened in the beginning, how uh, uh, these founders of the Vegetarian Health Society decided uh, to pay him a bit less amount of money. Uh, so I think it was maybe $40,000 when, when he came here and that was less than what he uh, could survive himself on. And there were people who advised uh, Ishwaji that asked for more, asked for maybe 50, 60 K. Uh, and uh, Ishwaji said that, okay, uh, you know, he's not used to asking anyone for anything, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll try to do that. And so he took somebody's advice. And uh, next time he had a meeting with uh, uh, the founders of uh, Vegetarian Health Society, um, Somehow, they understood uh, Dr. Clarence, Clarence and uh, Johnny, uh, without even asking uh, what he needed, they uh, brought out a new contract and said, okay, your, uh, your salary now is maybe 56K, uh, and that is what this other person had exactly suggested he needed in order to survive in Chicago. So it just happened automatically, uh, and the business somehow started doing well, and uh, the the first year it generated a lot of money and what Clarence and Johnny did was took all that money and when Ishwaji's birthday came around they poured all that money uh, probably more than hundred thousand dollar into arranging this birthday and uh, if you had seen that video you would marvel at how uh, wonderfully this event was celebrated uh, and Ishwaji was given a, a, a limousine as a gift uh, for his birthday and that was a wonderful gesture. Ishwaji talked about that so lovingly that these two, uh, as he uh, lovingly used to call these people, uh, his friend, black uh, uh, folks, black friends. And uh, he said that uh, because of that small gesture, uh, uh, that was not small uh, in my opinion, but uh, uh, for, uh, for Ishwaji, you know, uh, and great master, this was a small gesture from them that got repaid to them in so many folds because of this small gesture and Ishuji told me that you know great master really loved that gesture from them and that's why they were rewarded so hands handsomely and after that the business uh, really did well uh, and uh, when he was uh, actually at our home he shared how uh, the vegetarian health society and all star food uh, had done well because of great master's blessing and uh, he wanted uh, these companies also to participate in in uh, in unfolding what great master's prediction was uh, of of bringing the spirituality to the west and somehow these companies would also be helpful for people who wanted to 
seek employment or, or wanted sustenance in some ways. Uh, so in that adventure, I also uh, was uh, in, in subtle ways uh, cajoled, I would say, by Ishaji to participate. Uh, he would oftentimes uh, uh, just tell me, uh, uh, starting from the day, the day he came to our house, uh, I think that was 2017, and he would talk about how uh, a great master had prepared him for so many things that he was not capable of doing himself. Uh, like he uh, said that uh, he, uh, one time he saw an advertisement for uh, uh, Indian uh, administrative service in India and he was looking for a job. Uh, he thought he would apply for that. And uh, so he uh, took the exam, but he could not qualify. And uh, so he a couple of times did that and he could not uh, 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 get qualified for this uh, uh, Indian administrative service. Uh, so he went to a great master and said to great master that this is what he wanted to do. And great master told him, okay, why don't you uh, try once more? And next time Ishaji took the exam and he, I believe he came second uh, overall in India. And this is a very competitive exam. Uh, I have seen people prepare for this exam and, and uh, struggle, so I know what it takes to, to uh, come to in, in first, let's say, 10 positions or even 100 positions. So uh, he said that, uh, you know, with his all his effort, he could not uh, uh, achieve the success he wanted to achieve. But one, uh, uh, you know, one suggestion from Great Master, you know, made all the difference. And he cited so many other examples where uh, he was not really capable of uh, achieving uh, whatever he did. Uh, it was all because of great master's blessing. But I feel that he was a true seeker as well. And, and he wanted to serve his master along the way. That's why uh, these things happened to him. And uh, so many times he told me that he uh, experienced things that uh, felt like he's doing it, but he knows he knew that he is not the one doing it. He can see great master doing that work. And uh, so uh, I, I also uh, took inspiration from what uh, he, he did to his master. And I'm sure a lot of you who are involved now uh, are doing with the same inspiration that Ishwaji himself showed uh, for his master. So this was uh, 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 what uh, Dr. Clarence Brinson and, and Johnny did because of which they became multimillionaire. And uh, there were uh, other stories where he shared how, uh, what kind of life uh, uh, Dr. Brinson and, and Johnny led. And they really splurged, they, they knew how to live a life. And uh, Ishaji was on the other side, he was spiritual and he wanted to take care of great master's work. So he traveled quite a bit, but he had great time with uh, these friends of his. And uh, he knew that uh, these are uh, these friends are not just uh, uh, friends this time, but they have been friends for a long time, and they have had a past association as well. And uh, so he uh, uh, Ishwaji really cherished their friendship, and in fact uh, talked to me several times uh, about somehow helping them uh, in their adventure. He did uh, the same thing for others also. And he told me that, uh, you know, all the money that he had, he he didn't know how to, uh, uh, he didn't have any desire to enjoy the money. You know, he told me, I don't need to buy an airplane and fly around. Uh, I'm not that kind of person. You know, so people who ask me for help, you know, I, I give it to them. I, I share whatever great master has given me. Uh, that was his attitude. And uh, I sort of uh, agreed with him, you know, uh, at some point. Uh, the amount of money becomes meaningless once you have enough and so uh, and he was trying to teach that uh, at other times as well to me and some of uh, uh, the people who were close to him uh, I remember him uh, talking about uh, people uh, who uh, who were disciples of great master uh, or uh, they were in in that lineage and somehow uh, you know they uh, through their effort or through their good luck or blessing, they they had great success success in their life, but somehow they could not uh, keep the fruits that were given to them 
and they splurged it and uh, so they Ishwaji was cautioning us some of us that uh, you know uh, if you uh, get a lot of money uh, don't spend it like that you know uh, because with with a lot of money you know a lot of other problems also come so as a father he would advise us about uh, small small things uh, in fact he called uh, I wanted his opinion on certain investment and I said uh, would you please uh, uh, give me suggestions uh, some advice on how to invest uh, this money he said okay I'll, I'll tell you I'll uh, help you and uh, he called me one day and he suggested to me that this is how I should invest and so to me he was uh, not only a master he was uh, a friend that I could talk to he was an advisor uh, he was like my father uh, and uh, he he was uh, a person with great knowledge in so many things he gave me advice as to uh, whether I should invest in S Corp or C Corp I had no idea what this these things are S Corp and C Corp so of course when he was telling me uh, that you should uh, uh, you know have S Corp and uh, he looked uh, he saw a puzzled look on my face and he asked me do you know what S Corp is I said no Ishoji and then he uh, went and explained to me uh, what exactly it is, how favorable it could be, and so on. Uh, so he would he would give me advice like that, and not only just for me. Uh, I saw that he was concerned about my family too, and I I was amazed that uh, this. I mean, I was nobody, you know, and I somehow for whatever reason uh, only Ishoji knows, or maybe I was constantly asking him inside that show me uh, what love and devotion is because I was not able to experience that. So not only really through uh, his friendship to me uh, uh, as, a, as a sort of his son, and uh, by the way, he called, uh, he instructed some of uh, folks to call him father, you know, because he was like a father figure and some of these people uh, were missing father figure in, in their own life. I have my father, yet, uh, you know, a lot of you also have your own uh, parents but uh, he's a spiritual father to us. He's so much uh, bigger than just one person. Uh, so we look to him through different lenses and he was there for us. You know, he gave me advice as a friend, as an advisor, as a spiritual teacher and in so many ways. And uh, I saw that he was, in fact, not only taking care of me, but also uh, somehow taking care of uh, my f uh, family as well. Uh, I remember uh, just before COVID started, uh, you know, my son uh, fell sick and I was supposed to uh, attend Bhandara at that time. Uh, uh, and uh, so Bhandara event happened. Uh, I was somehow able to, uh, I was supposed to travel from California to Chicago. And this, the night that I was supposed to fly, my son really fell sick. And I was wondering whether to postpone my trip, but somehow I... I uh, had enough courage and I thought that Ishoji is going to take care of my son and I flew to Chicago and I had no plans to meet him because uh, there were so many people during Bhandara time who would line up uh, to get his darshan uh, just a couple of minutes of, of uh, you know silent chat sometime with him just looking at him so I did not want to take away any any time from him uh, and uh, yet he uh, somehow through uh, somebody uh, asked me to uh, come and meet him and uh, so I was really perplexed and I was happy though that he called me and so I had my few minutes I went and talked to him he asked me how's uh, how's my family and I thought that he probably knows what's going on in my head and uh, I told him that okay as I was uh, beginning to fly my son felt sick and Ishiji knows his name so uh, and he, I could see in his eyes how keenly he was attending, attending to my, uh, my words, uh, my uh, fear that something might happen to him because uh, my son was really complaining about a lot of headache. And uh, now looking back, uh, you know, I wonder whether uh, he had COVID or something like that. But at that point, Ishwaji was so keenly hearing what I had to say and cared about uh, what was happening. And then he assured me that, okay, he's going to be fine. Don't worry. Uh, 
so at other times uh, he took so so much keen interest uh, uh, that I, it totally surprised me in 2019 uh, right after i believe it was mitti seva uh, 2019 was a very eventful year uh, as some of you uh, might have assembled in bruce where he under a red carpet uh, red uh, uh, tent he gave a wonderful lecture i'm thinking of red i don't know uh, probably because he was wearing a red jacket on that day but it was beautiful uh, so this was close to where uh, ishiji's house is in in bruce and uh, right now there is the shed uh, next to the shed there was a place where we put up the tent um, where seva das uh, not me uh, put up the tent made all the arrangement and ishiji gave a wonderful discourse on that day um, uh, and talked about importance of uh, doing seva and he gave a, a wonderful he told a wonderful story that i hadn't heard till then uh, of a you know, of a king in al bukhara who came uh, and uh, how uh, he left all his kingdom and he wanted to surrender everything to his master uh, and uh, master in delhi and uh, how he was uh, rewarded for that effort he just wanted uh, something from master that is uh, that told him that uh, master is welcoming him and how uh, uh, satsangi of this master who wanted to get his daughter married uh, uh, asked this master in delhi for help and this master said oh i don't have much to give you uh, to help uh, your daughter get married here are these sandals and i can if these are broken sandals but if you want to keep them you can have them and uh, this disciple of his uh, happily took the sandals as he was walking back this king who is coming with all his uh, 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 folks that uh, you know uh, the caravan that is traveling with him uh, 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 he saw uh, that this man uh, is coming from the other side and he's carrying something on his uh on his head uh and uh, as he and he started uh, getting a wonderful smell and he thought wow where is this wonderful smell coming from and because he was traveling with his all platoon and i'm sure there must be a lot of animals and probably he was not smelling good and when he heard when he saw, uh, uh, smelled this wonderful scent coming uh that must have uh, you know uh, uh, taken his attention towards that and as that person uh went past him the smell started coming from a different direction and then he stopped this man and said would you trade what you have with what i have and this uh, uh this disciple of this master uh, who was very poor wanted to get his uh, uh daughter married he immediately realized that what master had done so of course he traded his his slippers that uh, master gave him uh with uh, everything that king had to offer and this king went with the sandals reached Uh, finally arrived at his master's feet and this master uh, asked him how much did you pay for the sandals and uh, the king said that i gave everything that i had and uh, and the master said oh that was a, uh, a very cheap uh, deal you had uh, you got it for a much uh, you got a bargain and ishwaji uh, narrated this story wonderfully and uh, i re- i vividly remember that because i i was right there in that audience and after uh, uh, his talk uh, was over uh, he stepped out of the podium and uh, where i was sitting he came uh, through that passage and i wasn't expecting that he would uh, you know uh, come anywhere near me and then he came near me still because there were so many people who knew him and uh, he came close to me he held my hand and he said uh, give my love to uh, your wife your son and he, he uh, addressed them by uh, their name and i was so taken aback and i was a little bit embarrassed as well that ishwaji is calling on their name uh, what would people around me think that ishwaji knows me so closely uh, and and know their name uh, but uh, this is how he uh, expressed uh, uh, his love for uh, not only me my family but i have seen him do for others and so uh, those things you know as i remember him try to remember him uh, you know try to uh, change myself from this rock that i feel uh, i was and slowly i can feel that he has he has been doing his magic 
because probably i needed this most because i could not really understand his message and uh, so uh, and how caring he was for all his friends like uh, clarence uh, dr clarence brinson uh, uh, and he was uh, he often asked me if i could uh, somehow get involved and and help him and uh, he asked for uh, he somehow expressed his vulnerability as well uh, to to his friend and that's what true friendship means that you not only share your uh, whatever good is happening wonderful experiences you are having um, but you also share uh, your uh, sad sadness as well when you need somebody uh, and truly he exemplified that uh, at uh, in my association in last few years i was fortunate that uh, uh, i was able to see his uh, personality uh, as a human being but uh, and maybe uh, i needed to see that in order to uh, believe him that he is a is a perfect living master and whatever people needed i know uh, because everybody who was around him had completely different experience uh, so not not necessarily the experiences that i shared and uh, because everybody's needs are different uh, all of us even though we are walking walking on the same path we have had variety of different experiences and we need different things to overcome the obstacles uh, the spiritual obstacles that are preventing us from moving forward so uh, and there were a bunch of other uh, stories that i wanted to share and i'll share few more uh, where uh, i was uh, i felt that uh, he is somehow pulling me uh, and uh, i used to maintain quite a bit of distance from him uh, i could never uh, totally surrender to him uh, for whatever reason Uh, but slowly he chipped away at that and so this was again in 2019 uh, where i had decided to do a little bit of seva for him uh, so with my technical background i thought i will uh, try to set up a wifi in in dera so if you those of you who have had chance to go to uh, bruce dera you could uh, uh, enjoy wifi uh, connection at the shed and watch tv and uh, because the cell signals are pretty weak over there so it's for sevadas who uh, are away from their house for them to reach their uh, friends family at home uh, it seemed like a important work uh, uh, and they could connect uh, through wifi to their family and friends so uh, with my little background i decided to take on that seva and as i was trying to do that uh, i had to uh, make some changes in the in the ishu ji's house uh, that was ishuji's house in the basement where isha offices uh, i had to make some uh, uh, let's call it uh, uh, corrections or fixes in the wifi setup and uh, but ishuji was at the time uh, there in in bruce and uh, he had meetings in the basement so i could not really get into the basement uh, to take care of my uh, some of the technical work and uh, so sevadas around there uh, who were uh, Uh, letting people uh, one at a time to see him uh, they asked me to uh, come back later uh, so this was evening and uh, along with a lot of us i was just waiting for uh, for him to uh, finish his uh, interview routine and uh, and a lot of people had left by then and so i was still around uh, with a couple of friends and uh, so my turn came finally uh, in the sense that he had left uh, the the basement to go up into this house and i could now uh, go to the basement and do my job uh, so as i was planning to do that uh, somehow uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, caretakers of ishwar ji uh, sevadas uh, dayan uh, who probably all of you know uh, she uh, came up to me and led me Uh, she said okay come you can go to the basement and i thought she is taking me to the basement and i was thinking why is she taking me to the basement i can go myself to the basement i don't need her help uh, but yet she was sort of tugging my uh, you know shirt i felt uh, but uh, leading me in certain direction and it, i thought okay I'll, i'll just follow her whatever she wants i, I don't understand completely but she uh, led me upstairs uh, through the sideways 
and I was thinking that I was supposed to go to the basement and here I am going up but uh, you know a part of me uh, resisted from saying anything and I just followed her instruction and she led me into what was at that time Ishuji's house and uh, she asked me to remove my shoes and said okay here is the table you can uh, you know do your work from here right and so I had laptop in my hand and I was inside Ishuji's house and I was wondering to myself okay I have the laptop I can do the work from the basement why should I be here but uh, at the same time I was perplexed uh, why I'm here and then I see Ishwaji come from uh, the bathroom and uh, with the same checked shirt that some of you might have seen yesterday uh, in the uh, photograph presentation that Suzanne had put together of uh, uh, you know this small checked shirt and as I uh, saw him uh, come inside the, the living room and he looked at me and he said oh Jagannath you are here oh what a wonderful surprise he acted surprised uh, he had his hand handkerchief in his hand I still vividly remember uh, I told him yeah Ishwaji uh, I had to do some uh, Wi-Fi work so I was supposed to be in the basement but I can do the work from here and he said okay come on in come on in have a seat and as soon as I entered the house fully and uh, I felt that uh, it uh, it's almost like an astral dream you know when you uh, Ishuji used to talk about uh, you know how what the features of astral dreams are and if you uh, have been lucky uh, had this blessing he can uh, he can give you glimpses of what astral dreams look like and so I felt that I'm in an astral dream because everything was so radiant inside the house because uh, Ishuji's wife had decorated the house so beautifully there were uh, a lot of uh, different uh, 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 pieces she had collected from all over the world uh, a lot of porcelain uh, 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 related uh, articles that were present uh, a lot of shoes uh, miniature shoes uh, kettles and various things um, that were in in this uh, laid out nicely in this house she went to a great length to decorate the house so as i entered the house it felt like the room is lit up because ishuji was there and there was enough light uh, even outside and as the high as the light was hitting hitting these porcelain vessels it was and these porcelain vessels were inside a uh, furniture uh, with the glass on top and so everything was seemed to be radiating and uh, because I was in, inside Ishoji's house for the first time, I did not really want to look at various pieces, you know, individually. And just I took a summary of it. I felt that the whole house was vibrating uh, with a wonderful light uh, and radiance. And Ishoji was in it. He invited me in. He uh, showed me. Uh, uh, he talked about the history of the house. He talked about how wonderful this house is. Uh, how different people who had visited this house had uh, different experiences at a uh, different point in time and he talked about how the house was owned by different people at different point in time and he has had various satsangs in the house and people had wonderful experiences and how the house went through alterations because uh, Ishwaji's wife wanted certain things done and uh, he talked to me at length uh, describing to me how house changed uh, over time and I was wondering why he is sharing so much detail with me. And uh, at, at a later point, uh, as I was thinking about that, a uh, call came to him. And uh, he uh, took up the call. And then he explained to the other person in the, in the call that uh, he's at the time uh, a little busy with his friend. He's talking to his friend. Uh, so addressing me as a friend. And then I realized he truly means that, you know, when he says that he's talking to a friend, uh, it gave me an answer that I was thinking of, you know, why he's sharing all these things with me. That exemplified to me that he, whatever he says, he really means it. And when he says that he's a true friend to us, he truly means that. And through some of these things, uh, uh, stories, uh, my personal experiences with him, not any uh, you know experience of higher learn realm uh, which he uh, you know uh, shared some of the glimpses with me 
fortunately and i was able to confirm with him because i've had some experiences uh before meeting him and after meeting him that involved him and uh i shared with him and uh at some point he also said that everything is inside you uh you go inside and check it out and uh so he he at every point he would give advice to take us to the next step and uh, i'll just relate one more experience uh, one more personal human experience that so much uh, uh, uh impressed on me uh, what he uh, what he wanted to say to all of us uh, through his example of uh, you know uh, showing uh, his love and devotion for his master so this was 2019 Uh, after bhandara uh, i thought okay i'll uh, ask for a few minutes from him and so this was in lady smith that uh, we had to go after the bhandara and uh, i had my turn uh, it took a long time because i i i sort of decided to uh, have a meeting with him quite late which he granted me and uh, i i was supposed to get just a couple of minutes uh, so what i realized was every time i met him i even though i came with little bit of preparation of what i wanted to ask him but in front of him uh, my uh, lips would be sealed i would forget all my question and uh, then uh, i would uh, come out of the room and i would uh, i would uh, tell myself that okay you again forgot the question you know and that happened over and over i'm sure a lot of you must have experienced the same thing somehow uh, in his company the mind becomes empty and it just wants to uh, receive everything from him without uh, you know uh, asking him something particular different people have different ways of uh, you know handling this so this time i was little prepared i thought okay i'm going to ask him three things and uh, sort of reminded myself over and over uh, so when i met him i asked him a few of those trivial questions meditation meditation related difficulties and so on and uh and in one of the question i had asked him about the companies and what's going to happen and he spent a lot of time almost 5 10 10 minute talking about what his plans are how great master is uh, uh is helping select people uh, and uh, hopefully this company these companies one day will will be able to help people uh, because at the end of the day all he wanted to do was help people so that they can uh, spiritually uh Uh, totally focus on uh, great master's message uh, and uh, spiritually uplift themselves and realize who they truly are and so he wanted to do whatever was possible from his side and uh, and at the end uh, when the meeting almost got over he told me that okay i have something to give to you and uh, then diana uh, brought a huge cup with uh, a lot of sweets in them and uh, so handed it over to uh, ishwaji and ishwaji gave it to me said that uh, now you're going to be going back uh, i want to give you a great master's prasad uh, for you and your family and he again narrated the story that he so fondly remembered when he was a small boy and how great master would pick him up while he's playing and uh, with with his dirty shirt he would pick him up and he will carry him over to a place where they they used to sell this this sweet uh, burfi and he would uh, reach into his inside pocket uh, take out few uh, uh, coins and give it to this uh, sweet maker and then buy the sweets with that his own personal money he never touched the money that was for sangat he used to have uh, two vests and in the outer vest he used to have uh, the sangat money and inside his own personal uh, personal money and he would buy the sweets uh, with his own personal money and uh, he he said that he still remember the exact taste of that sweet that he had that great master gave him he vividly remembers and somebody had offered the same kind of sweet to him as a prasad and he had made a, a lot of it and ishuji wanted to share that with me and he gave me a, a sort of bundle load of that and i was so thrilled so happy uh, and uh, so uh, emotional uh, with him uh, thinking of all of us and wanted to sharing wanted to share the same kind of love 
that he uh, got from his master and the same love that his master showered on him so i felt that he was truly sharing all of that love uh, across to not only me but with everyone uh, everyone i was associated with and i've seen the same same kind of love in every disciple uh, that i meet uh, who have been in touch with ishwar ji who has been really touched and he would not only uh, express in these ways but at other times also i was uh, totally surprised uh, you know one time uh, i was in london uh, and uh, so i realized that he was going to london and i had some difficulty in my life and i thought okay i want to get rid of all the challenges that i'm facing and instead want to spend some time with him so uh, i wrote him a mail and asked if i could uh, accompany him uh, in in his trip to uh, europe uh, london bezalu and other places and and he said oh, yes yes come along and uh, upon reaching london he inquired on us uh, he made sure that we are uh, well settled uh, where we were staying we got a chance to stay in the same hotel and uh, he inquired on us he made sure that uh, we have caught up with our sleep because we had traveled from california it was a, a long flight and uh, and i had a chance to meet him as he was uh, you know asking about us uh, when i met him he uh, extended his hand he held my hand and he said jagannath i got your mail and i was so touched by what you wrote uh, i i wanted to thank you uh, for expressing it in that way and he was really pleased by that and so now you can see that i'm becoming emotional you know i'm not like the rock that i uh, generally am so uh, i was able to uh, seek uh, uh, in my heart Uh, and uh, ask him uh, sort of in nagging way sometimes that oh, what is this you talk about love and devotion you know i don't get it and but but i do see him uh, uh, every day in in some way or the other uh, changing me uh, by sometimes uh, as i as i uh, shared that example of seeing shaky pizza restaurant and sometimes through other disciples experience uh, like the one uh, saurabh shared yesterday and various other uh, i constantly get letters of how they are uh, still uh, seeing uh, that issue is around they are seeing his hand in everything that is happening in their their life uh, i have lot more stories uh, it will take a long time to go through it uh, so uh, i'll try to share a lot of these things in person whenever i meet you folks uh and i i truly believe that uh, we will we will meet in future and i'll be able to express my uh, devotion to my master uh, by sharing all these small small stories that may help you as well and would also like to hear your side of story and enrich my life uh, through these stories as well with that uh, i'm going to conclude my talk and uh, 